Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad and this session we would look at a CPA simulation that's covered on the CPA rec section. It also helps you if you are taking an income tax course or if you are an enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, tax and a finance lecture. This is a topic. These are the courses of the topics that I covered, including thousands of CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists. If they're benefiting you, it means they might benefit other people. And please connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will you will find additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice, additional exercises. If you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA questions. If you are serious about passing the exam, check out my website. So let's take a look at this CPA simulation. And it seems pretty straightforward. Not a lot of exhibits, only one exhibits. Now on the CPA exam, be aware if there are too many exhibits, it means usually it's not asking for much. They're trying to throw a lot of stuff at you. It's when you have few exhibits that you have to be aware. But anyhow, the simulation is no more than a multiple choice for in a different format. That's all what a simulation is. So let's take a look at the simulation. On January 1st, two individual taxpayers, Berkey and Link, each invested in a, biz in a business activity. Berkey actively participated in the rental commercial property. That's an important piece of information. They're active participant, and it's a rental commercial re real property. Link was a passive investor. That's important in a cattle breeding business operated as a limited partnership. So L was a passive, B was active. Both activities sustained losses in year two. The exhibit above relate to each activity for Berkey and Link. And they're asking us for the amount at risk, the loss that can be deducted, the amount at risk at the end of the year, and the suspended passive losses. So now let's take a look at the exhibit and see what we can find out. Ownership and the activity, Berkey 50%. Berkey invested $10,000. Modified adjusted gross income 110, invested, investor share of activity loss 35, investor share of non-recourse debt at December 31st, 50,000, investor share of recourse debt. So you wanna make sure you understand the difference between non-recourse and recourse, why? Because non-recourse debt, you are not, you are not responsible for that debt. In other words, they cannot come after you personally they cannot come after you personally well the recourse that okay the recourse that is so here you are responsible Berkey is resp personally guaranteeing the 45,000 what's that gonna do they're asking us about the at-risk amount that's gonna be part of the at-risk amount link on the other side on the other hand owns 10 percent invested cash 60,000 modified adjusted gross income 175 their investor share of losses 50,000, investor share of non-recourse 40, and guess what? Link does not like to have recourse that, they have no recourse that, but Link has passive income from other sources of 5,000. So the first question is they're asking you, it's what's the at-risk amount in measuring loss limitation? Because the at-risk amount is the maximum amount you're gonna take in loss limitation. So what is the at-risk amount? Well, the at-risk amount is what you invested, basically, what you invested in the business, okay? What did B invested in the business? Well, they invested cash. B invested, let's start with the first one. So if you invested cash, that's an at-risk amount. If you contributed property, the basis, generally speaking, is there. Plus, if you have any recourse debt. So that's generally general rule or what's involved. So did Berkey invested cash? Yes, Berkey invested $10,000, no property. And Berkey is responsible for $45,000 in recourse debt. Therefore, the at-risk amount in measuring loss limitation is 55000 That's the at-risk amount for Berkey. Now, for Link, Link invested $60,000 cash, no property, and no recourse debt, so that's easy. So make sure if you get a question like this, make sure you answer Link, which is only $60,000. That's an easy, easy points to pick up on the exam. So Berkey is $55,000, the at-risk amount, which is going to determine the loss limitation for year two. 
in Berkey is 60,000. That's the maximum, the loss limitation. The second question is the loss that can be deducted in year two. First for Berkey. Well, let's look. Investor share of the activity loss is 35,000. That's, that's the amount of the loss. You might be saying, hold on a second. If I have 35,000 of, of uh, activity loss, uh, I can take it because I have 55,000 of at-risk amount. Not at all. You have to be careful. This is you're actively participating in a re rental real estate, in a commercial real estate. What does that mean? It means the maximum you can deduct, the maximum you can take a deduction is 25,000. This is important here. That's why they told you in the example that it's an it's Berg actively participated in the rental of a commercial property. In rental of the commercial property, if you're actively participant, you can take up to 25,000, which is kind of an exception. Okay? Now, so is the answer 25,000? And the answer is no. Well, Congress is, is generous, but to a point, I can assure you, if Congress allows individual to deduct 25,000 from rental real estate, many people will own homes because that's a generous deduction. Guess what? Congress says, if you, once you reach 100,000 of adjusted gross income, we're going to take away from this 25,000 and it's going to go away once you reach 150,000. So the phase out range is 50,000. The phase out range is 50,000. And guess what? If the phase out range of 50,000, if this is 50,000, Berkey is 10,000 into the range. This is 10K. 10K out of 50K. So, so basically, he's 10,000 into the range. 10,000 out of 50,000. 20%. Well, what does that mean? It means of the $25,000 deduction that Congress allows, Berkey's going to lose 20% because his AGI is 10,000 above the limit, which is 5,000. They're going to lose that deduction. Well, if they lose 25, what's left is 20. 20,000. So that's the loss that can be deducted. Now, you could also offset losses if you have a passive income, but there's no passive income for Berkey. Link. Link, he is a passive investor. So all all of all of this is passive loss. That's the bad news. The good news is there's some passive income. Guess what? If you have some passive income, you can deduct the passive income against the passive loss. Therefore, Link can deduct five thousand. That's it. There's no twenty five thousand for him because that's cattle breeding. It's not rental real estate or commercial rental real estate. Now they're asking us for the amount of risk as of the end of the year. Well, if we want to know the amount of the risk at the end of the year, we have to know the beginning of the year. The beginning of the year was 55,000, the amount at risk. Then we deducted 20,000, but the investor share of loss activity is 35. Although we only deducted 20, yes, we did deduct 20, but our share of the loss is 35. We experience 35 of losses. Therefore, the amount of risk, the amount of risk at the end of the year is 20,000. Is 20,000. And this is a little bit tricky because student says, well, hold on a second. I only deducted 20. Yes, you deducted 20, but you experience $35,000 of losses. As you experience the losses, they're going to reduce your at-risk amount. Okay, let's look at link. Link, the beginning at risk amount is 60 it's right here then again they, they were only be, they, uh, they were only able to deduct 5000 okay but the actual losses were how much the actual losses uh, for them were 50000 the actual losses were 50000 it doesn't matter what you took so what's left is 10000 what left is um, 10,000. That's 4C, 10,000. 10,000. Now, suspended passive losses at December 31st. Suspended means you could not use them. Suspended losses. It means they're suspended. You can't use them. Well, guess what? You had in losses, Berkey had $35,000 in losses. He was able to deduct twenty. What's left is 15. So the suspended losses are the losses that you could not take. And why you could not take them? 
because you are limited. You are limited. I mean, the Congress was generous enough to give you that 20,000. Okay. If Berkey was in some other business other than this act, active participant in a rental commercial property, they won't be able to take any losses. So what's left suspended is 15. For Link, for Link, the losses were 50. The losses were 50. They used up 5,000. They were able to deduct 5,000. What's left is 45. 45. And this is basically how you would approach this CPA simulation on the exam. You'll be lucky if you get a passive activity loss because usually they don't ask for a lot. But if you are at, I mean, this is, you know, if you, if you face something like this on the exam, you better be ready. Uh, but I don't think they, out, they would ask you anything more in depth than this. So the trick here is to know that you have a recourse stat. It's part of your at-risk amount. It's very important to understand what's the at-risk amount, the purpose of it. Again, as, as I always end up by asking you or encouraging you to visit my website for additional resources. You're going to study for your CPA exam one time. You're going to study for your CPA exam one time. It's worth it. Invest in your career. And CPA is worth it for your future. Good luck and study hard.